Hi my dear primary tree friends, in this practical math video, we are going to learn about a type of model that can be used to solve math problem sums. This kind of model has a very special name and it's called the comparison model. After going through this video, you can practice the problem sum questions on our website at practical.sg and see if you have mastered all the skills you need. Are you ready to begin? So what is the comparison model? A comparison model is a kind of bar model where we draw the bars side by side so that we can see the difference between the objects better. So let's take a look at this example question and see how the comparison model works. Elsa made six times as many huge ice cubes as tiny ice cubes. She made 540 more huge ice cubes than tiny ice cubes. How many ice cubes did she make all together? So after reading the question, how do we know that we are supposed to draw the comparison model and not the part whole model? Well, we will always draw the comparison model when we have two different objects and the question gives us information that helps us compare the two amounts. Can you spot the objects we have here? We are looking at two types of ice cubes in this math question, the huge ice cubes and the tiny ones. And knowing the type of objects that we have is very important because it helps us to label our bar models clearly. So how do we start to draw the comparison model? Well, we'll first write the name of the two objects on top of each other. So we have huge ice cubes and tiny ice cubes. So far so good. Next, remember that the model is supposed to help us see the difference between the objects better. Now, the second thing to do is to look for keywords. Keywords that gives us some clues about the number of different ice cubes that we have. I also make six times as many huge ice cubes as tiny ice cubes. Do you spot the keywords six times as many as? If you did, good job on the quick observation. Otherwise, it's alright, you have just learned something new. And I'm sure you'll be able to spot the right words next time. So what does six times as many as mean? This means that if one of the objects has one unit, the other object must have six times of that amount. Do you know how much 6 times 1 is? 6 times 1 equals 6, correct? So 6 times of 1 unit is 6 units. Now that we know one of the objects has 1 unit and the other has 6 units, we need to think about which object is the one with more units. Elsa makes 6 times as many huge ice cubes as tiny ice cubes. So do you think we have more huge ice cubes or tiny ones? Well, whenever we have a sentence like this, we will look at the object that comes after the second S. This will be the object that we are comparing with and it will always be represented by one unit. Let's read the sentence again, shall we? Elsa made six times as many huge ice cubes as tiny ice cubes. Here's the first S and this is the first object. Then we have the second S. Looks like the object that comes after it are the tiny ice cubes. So that's how we know that we are comparing the huge ice cubes with the tiny ones. And since the tiny ice cubes are represented by one unit, how many units represent the huge ice cubes? That's right, 6 units. So let's draw one rectangular box to represent one unit for the tiny ice cubes and 6 rectangular boxes on top of it to represent the huge ice cubes. There we go. Our model looks very neat and tidy, correct? Are we done? Nope. Whenever we are drawing models, we need to make sure that we have included all the information that is given in the question. So let's see what else we are missing in our model. She made 540 more huge ice cubes than tiny ice cubes. So looks like we will need to add in this piece of information as well. Once again, let's try to spot the keywords. This should be quite easy, correct? Do you manage to find the words more than? 540 more huge ice cubes than tiny ice cubes. Once again, it looks like we are comparing the number of huge ice cubes and the tiny ice cubes. So which one do you think is the one with the bigger number? Do you say tiny ice cubes? You are absolutely correct. Yay! And this happens to be the object that comes exactly after the word then. So now we know that when we compare the huge ice cubes to the tiny ones, there are 540 more huge ice cubes than the tiny ones. So let's look at our model again. Do you see that we have a longer model for the huge ice cubes? So great job on drawing the correct comparison model. Now looking at the model, can we tell what's the difference in the number of ice cubes? 
Sure we can. When we compare the two models, this extra part over here shows us the difference. And this difference, my dear friends, happens to be 5 units. So that's how we know that the extra 540 ice cubes refers to these 5 units over here. Now, let's look at the question again. Do we have any other information that we're supposed to add into our comparison model? Hmm, seems like we have everything covered. Great job, everyone. Our comparison model is complete. Now let's see why we need to draw the comparison models and why are they so helpful, alright? When we look at any comparison model, we should be able to tell quite a number of things. Four things to be exact. Can you guess what these four pieces of information are? First of all, we can tell the number of units that represent one of the objects that is being compared. So in this case, it's the huge ice cubes. Then, we are also able to tell the number of units that represent the other object that is being compared. In this question, we have the tiny ice cubes. So that's the second thing. The third thing that we can tell is the difference in the number of units between the two objects. In our example, we know the difference between the number of huge ice cubes and the number of tiny ice cubes. And lastly, we can tell the total number of units of everything we have. And here, we are referring to the huge ice cubes as well as the tiny ice cubes. So how many of these did you manage to guess? Let us know in the comments below. Now that we have drawn such a beautiful model, some of you might be thinking, so how exactly should we make use of our comparison model for math problem solving? Well, let's go back to the question and see what we are supposed to solve for. How many ice cubes did she make all together? Aha! See the keyword all together? This is the same as saying that we need to find the total number of the huge ice cubes and the tiny ice cubes. So how do we do that? To find the total number of the huge ice cubes and the tiny ice cubes, we'll first need to find how many ice cubes one unit represent. So let's make use of our model to help us with that. From our model, we can tell that 5 units represents 540 ice cubes. Correct? So let's make use of that to find the value of one unit. How much do we get when we divide 540 by 5? When we divide 540 by 5, we should be able to get 108. And once we know how many ice cubes one unit represents, we can then move on to find the total number of ice cubes. How many units represent all the ice cubes? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So to find the value of the 7 units, let's take the value of one unit, which is 108, and multiply it by the total number of units, which is 7. So 108 times 7 is 756. And that's how we know that Elsa makes 756 ice cubes all together. Problem solved. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed this practical math video as much as we do making it for you. So now that you have gained a new powerful math skill, use it to defeat all the math problem sum monsters that stands in your way. Happy problem solving!